Hello again. Uh, we're still, again, this is Danny, and we're still in, in Genesis. And uh, we had uh, looked at uh, Genesis, up to Genesis 20, I believe it was. So that's where we're going to start today. Uh, remember um, Abraham, uh, remember Abram's name was changed to Abraham in, in, in the previous chapters that we've already gone over uh, and Sarah her name was her Sarah was changed to Sarah and uh, and they had a baby uh, his, his name you know Isaac remember that and then remember we said Abraham was 100 years old and Isaac was born and remember Sarah laughed when the angel said that she was gonna have a baby uh, and this time it says it, it says Sarah laughed and said God has made me laugh but it was a different laugh. It was, it was a happy, joyous laugh that God did what He said He was going to do, and uh, you can laugh too when God does what He says He's going to do. You can laugh for joy. Now Hagar and Ishmael it became a little problem, and uh, you'll find out that uh, uh, they had to leave, uh, and uh, God God takes care of them. But Ishmael w was a problem. And then we find out that Abram is told by God to uh, do something unusual. It says to go sacrifice Isaac to him. You know what Abraham does? He says, okay, we'll do it. So he takes Isaac, goes to the mountain. But he says something when he got down to the bottom of the mountain. He says, me and the child will return. And I, I, I just know that he, he knew that Isaac was a promise from God. And he said that, you know, Isaac would be blessed and all. And, and, and the covenant God made, Isaac was part of that, you know. So he knew that God had to bring him back to life. Even, even if Abraham took his life, God would bring him back to life. And, and I believe that too. Uh, but when he gets up there and he gets ready to do it, man, it is, it's in his heart. God sees he is willing to do it. And God says, wait a minute, hold up. I got a ram for you over here in the bush. Let the boy up and, and you sacrifice the ram. And because Abraham did this, God said that all the nations would be blessed. And this is what I believe. Some people may not believe this. But I believe that if Abraham hadn't been willing to sacrifice his son that maybe God wouldn't have been willing to sacrifice his son for us <laughs> whoa but Abraham did and God did oh and we're so blessed we're so blessed because Jesus laid his life down for us you know and uh, Isaac wasn't a little boy either he wasn't a little bitty child he was old enough he could have got up and said no I don't want to do this but he did it. Jesus, he could have said no if he wanted to. Remember he went in the garden and said, if there's any other way to do this, let's do it. But nevertheless, Father, we'll do it the way you want it done. And he laid his life down for us willingly. Just like Isaac was willing to lay his life down because his father asked it of him. And Jesus, again, the father asked him and he did and, and you gotta realize why did he do it what was the prize for Jesus for him to lay his life down for us and let his blood be shed for us you get the hint that his blood would wash away our sins and allow us to be born again into the family of God so what do you think his prize was <laughs> us <laughs> praise God you know Jesus laid his life down for you. Man, that, that's just that's a blessing just to know that. You're somebody to God. You're somebody to God. Be all that God has called you to be. Live for him and do what he says. Get into his word and fellowship with him and be what he wants you to be. You're somebody to God. You're somebody to God. And he wants you blessed. And he's got things for you to do. 
So get to know him. Get to know him. And uh, trust him and believe him. I want to, I've been on a computer. I'm going to go to the to my Bible here just for a second. And I want to read some things to you. Remember, it says, and, and Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and all who hear it will laugh with me. What we just heard, what I just said, what I just said should make you laugh to know what God has done for you, what Jesus has done for you. It says, she also said, who would have said to Abram that Sarah would nurse children? For I have borne him a son in his old age. Who would have thought that God, who created this whole universe, and we learned that when we first started Genesis, he created the whole universe, and he's God. He, he, has every, he owns everything. Some men think they own things, but, the, but God owns it. Doesn't it make you laugh joyfully that God would allow his son to lay his life down for you? Again, I want you to understand how important you are to God. You know, God created man for what reason? For fellowship. God wants to fellowship with you. He wants to bless you. The word talks about him blessing us through eternity, his children, and show us how gracious he is to us. And, it, you know, that, that just blesses me to know that. And, you know, Sarah, she lived to a good old age, and, and Abraham lived to a good old age. And Isaac, let me go back to my computer now. It says Sarah died at 120 years. It says Rebecca is chosen to be Isaac's wife. And they have Esau and Jacob. And, you know, Esau, he sold his birthright to Jacob. And uh, birthrights were important back in those days, very important. And so he didn't think much of it, and he sold it. And that didn't go well for Esau. And then it says there was another famine in the land, and Jacob went to Gerar. And he gave his wife, Rebecca, to a guy named Abimelech, because he feared for his life. Did the same thing his father did. See, even, even great people of God mess up sometimes. You know, uh, when you see a brother or sister in the Lord, even though somebody might be a Christian for a long time, uh, even um, a minister, when they mess up, don't tear them down. Lift them up. Lift them up. Because uh, these great men of God, they, they, I mean, they had fellowship with God like we, we don't have right now, you know. Uh, but, uh, he, he gave her away again, and uh, Abimelech sees them talking and says, wait a minute, that's got to be your wife. And then Jacob says, yeah. And so uh, he, he, gets, he gets all that squared away. But when, when a man, a brother, sister uh, mess up, don't tear them down, lift them up. Now Jacob receives Isaac's blessing. And uh, Esau comes in after Jacob had already received a blessing. And, and you'll have to read that to find out about what that was all about, too. But uh, I'm not going to tell you. And so Jacob is sent to his uncle Laban to take a wife. And Jacob marries Leah and Rachel. He works for her for seven years. Uh, for Leah and Rachel. He, he wanted one and got the other and had to work another seven years. And read that. That's in uh, Genesis 21 through 31. So read that and find out about that. But uh, Joseph was born. And he had ten brothers. They're born. And then he and later on he had another one. But Jacob gets all the speckled and spotted sheep and all the brown lambs and all the speckled and spotted goats. 
you need to read it to find out what all of that was about. See, I'm not going to tell you everything. I want you to read it for yourself. And, uh, and, and again, it's just to find out how it all got started, you know, how, how, how God created everything and, and how things came about. And we're going to get into a little bit more of that. Uh, but anyway, the lambs and goats, God blessed, blessed him, and, and uh, he leaves Laban, and, and uh, God made sure to, to even, even though Laban tried to cheat him, God made sure he was blessed. And that's in Genesis 21 through 31. Now, Jacob goes back to, to meet Esau, uh, and it was kind of a, a rough time there, but every, God took care of everything. And go back and read that, too, to find out what happened between Jacob and Esau and uh, why Jacob was kind of serious about going back to him. But Jacob's name was changed to Israel by a man that he wrestled with all night. That's how Jacob's name got changed to Israel. And, and if, in, the, in the Bible, there it, it'll say Jacob sometimes or Israel sometimes, but that's where the nation of Israel came from. Now, Jacob and Esau, they meet, and they make peace. And again, you have to go back and find out why they had to make peace. And, and Dana, Jacob's daughter, uh, was out. She got uh, defiled, uh, raped by a guy named Shechem, a prince of another tribe. And you'll find out that her brothers, Simeon and Levi, they went and killed all the males of that city that she was from. They took it very serious. And then you find out that God appears to Jacob, and he blesses him and tells him that his name is Israel. And Rachel dies in childbirth, and Benjamin is born later. You know, at, at, at the end of her life, uh, Benjamin is born, and she dies from the childbirth birth of Benjamin. Isaac dies and is buried by his sons Esau and Jacob. That's chapters 32 through 35. Now, chapter 36 tells about the family of, of Esau. And I want you to, to read that on your own, the, the chapter. Uh, I'll tell you what happened to Esau and his family and all. Now, Joseph. Y'all remember Joseph? Joseph has his two dreams. Now, Joseph tells the dreams to his brothers, and they're not too happy about it. Because in the dream, they bow down to Joseph. And uh, yeah, would you think your brothers or your sisters and your mama and your daddy would feel if you told them that in the future they were going to have to bow down to you? Well, his family kind of thought the same way you did. <laughs> And they didn't like it. And, and Joseph tells his father in, in about the dream, and he, his father wasn't happy either. And his father says, Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? <laughs> you know, sometimes when God tells you something or shows you something, it may not be a good thing just to go around telling everybody. But, uh, do what God tells you to do. But anyway, he, he, uh, he gets them pretty upset with him. So his brothers and him were out, you know, with, with, the, with the sheep, and uh, they hatch up a deal that they're going to, well, they, some of them were talking about killing Joseph, and uh, then they found, uh, finally they dug a pit and put him in it, and somebody came by and they sold him. And guess where? Joseph winds up. Should I tell you? Okay, he winds up in Egypt. He winds up in Egypt. He sold to Potiphar, and you know what? He has favor in Potiphar's house, and he's really blessed. God is watching out for him. God gave him that dream. He believed it. And he knew that God was watching out for him. 
And he was doing really, really well in Potiphar's house until Potiphar's wife tries to get him to sleep with her. You know, the devil will offer you all kinds of temptations to get you off of what God wants you to do. So don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. Joseph didn't fall for it. He refused. And then it came about, she lied. She said that he did try to do something with her. And he was put in jail. Ooh, that doesn't look like God showed him much favor, does it? Well, in jail, he has favor. <laughs> God watching out for him again. Then a butler and a baker, they tell them the dreams, and he interprets them. Well, because of the dreams, you know, he tells a butler, he says, uh, you're going to live, and tells a baker, you're going to die. And that's what happened. The, and, and he... He asked uh, his butler, said, remember, remember me you know, when, you, when you get out of here. But he, but he kind of forgot him for a while. Then Pharaoh has a dream which no one could interpret. And the butler says, oh, yes. There was a guy that I was in prison with. His name was Joseph. So he, he tells Pharaoh about it. And Pharaoh gets Joseph to come up. Joseph interprets the dream. Seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. Seven years of both. Pharaoh was really impressed with Joseph interpreting the dream. sets Joseph over his house. <laughs> Does that favor come back in there? Pharaoh sets Joseph over his house and all his people, all his people, he was, he was right under Pharaoh. God's looking out for him. There was a reason for that. Joseph was 30 years old when this happened. Now, you know, the family was in the land and all. And, and so Jacob, Joseph's dad, sends 10 sons, 10 of his sons, to Egypt to get grain. And he leaves one of them at home. He said, through what Joseph did, his father and family came to Egypt. Now, if, if you'll read that, it's, that's in chapters 37 through 47. It's really interesting how God worked it out and how Joseph did it. His brothers came in, and they didn't recognize him. He, he, he knew who they were. And uh, they uh, find out that he wants them to send them back, and you know, his Benjamin's at home and, his, and all this. And he, uh, he, he works around with them, and and gets him in, in there and finally gets his father in there and then he tells them all who he is. Do you imagine that his brothers might have been a little <laughs> a little concerned that here this man is the second man under Pharaoh there and uh, it, you know what they did to him? But God had him there for a purpose. And again, that was in chapters 37 through 47. Uh, read that. It, 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 again, it, it's really interesting uh, how God works things out. You know, and when he went to jail, well, when, when they put him in the pit, you know, and, and he got sold into slavery and all, uh, that, that wasn't good, was it? It was tough. Sometimes there's situations in your life that are tough, but you just got to know that God's working. God's working. And he says you have favor with him and man. So favor's coming in there somewhere. Favor's coming in there somewhere. And, uh, and so just keep trusting God. Keep doing what you know that God wants you to do. Don't get bitter about things. You know, just keep trusting God and, and let him work things out. And listen to him. 
listen to him. Sometimes he'll tell you to do something in the natural to take care of a problem you're having. Sometimes it'll be something spiritual. But listen to him. Listen to him. I tell people uh, about healing. I say, if something comes on you, I said, don't just do something. Go to God and say, God, you know what's happened here. Uh, I, I don't know everything about what's happening, but you do. And Lord God, I ask you for direction. It's, it's like you, if you feel something coming on your body, go to God. God, what do I do? He may tell you just to change your eating habit. You know, He, he may tell you, okay, I want you to go to the doctor. And the, and the doctor can help you. Believe, believe that God will show the doctors what you need. And, you know, God will work with you where you are. Uh, uh, Keith Moore, I, I love hearing that man minister. He, he, he's so simple, but the word's powerful that he, that he preaches, you know. Uh, and you can understand it. But he said he went and prayed for a guy one time that was sick and was dying. And, and he asked the guy, can you believe that God will heal you? And the, and the guy was kind of hesitant. And, and, you know, and he said, uh, well, can you believe that you'll feel better tomorrow than you do today? And the guy said, yeah, I can believe that. So that's what they prayed for, for him to feel better. And Keith came back the next day, and uh, he said, uh, you know, he felt better. So he said, let's do it again. And they prayed again to be better the next day. And he was better the next day. And uh, anyway, Keith was gone for a while, and he came back. And, and the guy was gone. He, he had gone home. Not home would be the Lord, but he'd gone home to his house. He, he was well and his whole, his faith began to grow. So God will see you where you are, and if you'll keep trusting and keep trusting, your faith will grow and you can receive what you need from God. So just do things the way God tells you to do. And uh, don't just jump out there on your own and say, I know everything, I know, I know what to do. Seek God, ask him, ask him. But, uh, so Jacob, uh, he blesses Joseph's sons of Manasseh and Ephraim, and he prophesies over all them, and then the Jacob dies, and, and they go back to Canaan to bury him. And his brothers were concerned after that. And he tells his brothers, he says, what you meant for evil, God meant it for good to save many lives. And he tells his brothers and family members that when they leave Egypt, take his bones with them. And he was placed in a coffin. But he believed what God had said. And that was chapters 48 through 50. Genesis 15, 13 through 14. Then he, God, said to Abram, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs and will serve them. And they would afflict them 400 years. And also, the nation whom they serve will I judge. Afterward, they will come out with great possessions. Do you remember that back from Genesis 15 when he said that? Where did they wind up? They wound up in Egypt. After Joseph died, Another, well, another Pharaoh came in, and he wasn't like the Pharaoh that, that uh, Joseph served under. And the Jewish people were growing. They were growing, and, and the Pharaoh got kind of concerned. And you remember what he did. He uh, wanted them to kill the, the male babies and all that stuff. And, you know. But anyway, God told him this back in Genesis 15. He said, they'll be, they'll serve in this land 400 years. And he said, then they're going to come out. They're going to come out. And they came out blessed. And you'll have to read that. You read, read some of it in Exodus. But see, God told them that. And it didn't happen for a long time. But it did happen. When God tells you something, it may not happen in the next five minutes. It may not happen in the next five weeks. It may not happen in the next five years. But it will happen. 
that we have found him. God said Jesus was coming. It was a long, long time, but Jesus came. The word tells us that Jesus is coming back to receive us. It's been a long time, and I believe it's soon. He is coming back. And if you don't know Jesus, remember I told you, you're his prize. He wants you to know him. He made it very easy. He said, call on me. Ask me to be Lord. Turn from your sins. Serve me. And you'll be born again into the family of God. God wants to take care of you. He wants to show you his love. If you'll just give your life to him, he'll bless you. And I want to tell you, I bless you in the name of Jesus. and Have a blessed day.